the third story viewers that we're tracking after crossing multiple milestones and setting new benchmarks in the space fairing the isro has now notched up a century of launches just today this after the nvs 02 satellite mounted on top of gslv f15 rocket lifted off successfully from the satish dhawan space center at sri harikota in andhra pradesh earlier today Top space scientists hailed the ISRO launch as scoring a hundred. Take a look at this report. In yet another milestone moment, the Indian Space Research Organisation notched up a century of successful launches today. The GSLB F-15 rocket carrying the NVS-02 satellite zoomed into space after a faultless liftoff. from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sriharikota. An integral part of the navigation with Indian constellation system, the NVS-02 satellite is tipped to provide position, velocity and timing services across the country. The ISRO put a post out on its X handle, declaring its 100th launch as successful. Union Science and Technology Minister Jitendra Singh commend in the country's space scientists and the remarkable acumen and capabilities speaking to republic isro chairman dr veenar anan hailed the launch as a proud day in the life of every indian interstate separated we are the curve if you see slowly you started now we are in the exponential growth so again the numbers are not very important for us more than that the requirement need based it will be launch but our capability is today 15 to 20 launches we can if demand is there we can launch m mohan a top space scientist at the vikram sarabhai space center credited all previous isro teams with laying the foundation for a century of successful launches okay see the uh, uniqueness of this launch is uh, not related to the rocket uh, gslv uh, uh, specifically it is the next uh, con um, the one of the configurations of the gslv we have which we uh, had already successfully launched in uh, december 2018 uh, which was named gslv f11 so the vehicle configuration is uh, not having any change so there is nothing uh, unique about the vehicle but the uniqueness is like what i was mentioning earlier it is like a scoring a 100 so a 100 uh, in cricket is something is not very easy so it is a, a tough task to come to the 100th lift off from the sri harikota uh, range so it is a credit of the entire isro uh, fraternity uh, from the uh, early 70s and then starting with the first launch in 1979 s onikrishnan the director of vikram sarabhai space center also commended isro over its 100th launch so it's an important mission not only for isro but for the entire country it has got an integrated vehicle health management it has got an escape system it is not the conventional way where a payload fairing is holding the satellite there's a, uh, there are differences so all this uh, we have a completed the development and the vehicle systems as well as the crew escape systems have reached the sri harikota all the good sub assemblies are getting assembled as the country rejoices isro's century of launches The focus has already shifted to future ambitious space missions including Chandrayaan-4 and Gaganyaan. We're also being joined by Padma Bhushan, Mr. Nambi Narayanan, who is a former ISRO scientist, to speak to us about the details. Sir, thank you for speaking to Republic. I firstly want to understand after congratulating you over the launch, I want to understand how will this be a game changer for India's navigation systems, sir? You know, actually, this launch, uh, though it's a hundredth launch from Sri Harikota, I think it's a seventeenth uh, launch using this uh, GSLV configuration. Um, it is very important in the sense it is purely a, a defence-oriented uh, satellite. I don't think there is any uh, public use of this uh, particular satellite. Particularly, uh, we are talking about. Uh, uh the our own uh, navigation system i mean just to give you an insight into how important it is i can tell you that uh, many of us depend upon the gps system to locate uh, to go where we want to go etc 
launching a rocket also depends on the GPS system. In fact, if somebody puts the GPS system off, then you are a, as good as a blind man. You won't be able to. In fact, it is more important in the in the missile system. So we are equipping ourselves for self-sufficiency. We are independent. We want to be independent of any of the foreign uh, developed system. So that way we are doing this. And uh, this, of course, has certain limitations in the sense you have uh, a limited, uh, it's not a global system, but it is a system which will be absolutely useful for India and also about 1,500 kilometers around India. Uh, in case if you want to have a global system, then you have to go for uh, at least 20 satellites, in, in my opinion. Now this we are talking about seven satellites. So in that sense, it is marking a major milestone for our uh, self-sufficiency with respect to space-related matters, with respect to defense. So to that way, we, are, we can be very happy and congratulate ourselves that uh, the success of this system marks a major milestone in that sense. for speaking to Republic. We really appreciate your time. Viewers, for now, it's time to move on to the next story that we're tracking. The The Joint Committee of Parliament scrutinizing the Waqf Amendment Bill has adopted its repository changes and the amended version of the proposed law, which was brought to power by a majority vote. While opposition MPs voiced their strong criticism, the adopted bill, which was approved with 1511 votes, alleging that it was unconstitutional and will also destroy the Waqf board by allowing for the government's interference in the religious matters of Muslims. We're also being joined by Aprajita Sarangi, who is a BJP MP and also a Joint Parliamentary Committee member. Ma'am, thank you for speaking uh, to Republic. My first question to you is, why do you think the opposition is looking at it as a threat? And why do you think that this will prove out to be otherwise? All of us are aware of the fact that the Joint Parliamentary Committee was constituted in the Lok Sabha on 9th of August 2024. The first meeting was held on 22nd August 2024. And thereafter till today, the Joint Parliamentary Committee met for 38 times. And this was more than 112 hours. And more so, we actually talked to more than 284 stakeholders and organizations. And we also moved to different places in the country, different states, to talk to the organizations to have their viewpoints on the Waqf Amendment Bill 2024, who could not come to Delhi. So I think this has been a very comprehensive exercise, a very meticulous exercise. And all the while, the chairperson of the committee, Sri Jagdambika Palji, tried to take everybody along. And the fact remains that we have to understand the intention of the Prime Minister Modi's government as to why it was trying to bring about changes in the bill that is in the act which is there, the Principal Act 1995 and the Amendment Act 2013. You know, this was necessitated by the fact that there are many lacuna in the way the work properties are being managed currently. So, Prime Minister Modi's government's basic intention is to ensure proper governance of the work properties, proper management of the work properties, and therefore, this particular bill, when it becomes an act, which has been adopted by the Joint Parliamentary Committee today, by majority vote, it was 16-11. We were 16 and 11 votes came from the opposition side. It will be handed over to the Honorable Speaker tomorrow. Sri Om Birlaji will be getting a copy of that resolution that we have adopted today. And thereafter, he would be deciding the next course of action. If he thinks right, it would be brought in the budget session of Parliament in the Lok Sabha, and it would be debated upon in the Lok Sabha first. So I think the intention of the government need not be 
uh, doubted. There, you know, every time the opposition should not put a question yes. mark on the right, intention of the government. The intention is, right, to, is to ensure proper governance of the work properties. And everything has been done yes. in a highly democratic and constitutional manner.